Shalom guys and in today's video we are going to give pretty much our story um, a testimony story of what we've been going through hoping that this can definitely help you guys along the way so if you're interested in this story stay tuned full-time RV life I know that most of and you guys are gonna hear noise we're at a campground people are moving out it is Sunday and you're gonna hear big rigs and trucks probably the entire time because our front door is open disclaimer but I want to make sure that we do our part in letting you know that the full-time RV life is awesome but it's not always all Instagram pictures it's real life and things still happen like they would if we were in a brick and mortar. So just to get started with this whole story, I want to give a background to every time we do a trip, something happens. Yep. At some point, if you are following our journey, you probably probably see Zay under the hood, under the truck, under the RV at some point or another. So that is pretty much our norm. We're used to, at one point or another, whether we're coming or going, stopping on the side of the road for something, whether it's something as simple as the exhaust pipe needs to be lifted, um, a wheel having some quite a bit of malfunction, or something as big as the truck overheating. But Zay has always been able to fix most of any issues that we have had the entire time we've been together which has been nine years at this point i have never had to have my car put into the shop so i do solely depend on zay to get it done right hope so i do and so with that being said with what we're about to tell you i it was a total shocker for me with my side of the story and we're going to try to give you both sides so let's definitely just get to it Okay, so if you've watched the vlog before it, this one, not the Shabbat prep, but the one before that where we were surprising my mom for her birthday, um, you saw that Zay was probably under the truck or was on the side of the road for one, one reason or, no, or another. So as always, Zay fixes it and we are back on the road. So with that video on the way back, we were headed back from Illinois here to Nashville and I'm going to start with my side of the story. So on the way back, we were headed back. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the truck made a noise. Okay. So on my side of the story, when the truck made that noise, what I do? From the passenger seat, on my phone, scrolling through Instagram or whatever. I looked at him like, what's that? Knowing, knowing he knows what that is, but also knowing that, oh, he could probably fix it. He was like, what did you say? Your side. Uh, immediately, I just, it, it downshifted funny. And immediately, I knew that the transmission was slipping or had some kind of computer issue or something to do one or the other with the transmission. But when he said it, all he said was, yep, that's the transmission. I said, what? He's like, that's the transmission. So then... I noticed that the truck, so it slowed down. I'm like, well, it's still going. He said, yeah, it's in limp mode. Limp mode means? Limp mode and most newer electronic trucks, they default to a certain gear when there is an issue so that you can at least still drive the vehicle without destroying the entire transmission. So when he said that that was in limp mode, pretty much I just thought that that means that the truck goes, like you said, into a, a mode to where you can just get off the side, of, get off of some type of exit. 
you know. So it went into limp mode. And we got all the way off an interstate onto an exit. The exit to the road. The road into a hotel parking lot. Now, we are in the heart of Nashville, Tennessee on Music City Drive. That right there, I'll let you know, is a busy place, right? So, um, when I tell you the moment we got off of the street onto the exit where the um, hotel was, the truck instantly was done. It was finished. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't nothing. It was finished. It was done. Now, you tell what you felt like when that happened. Uh, it was just a, like a rock sinking in my stomach because I knew that it wasn't just a minor issue, that it was actually a catastrophic failure, which means new transmission is what that means. Not, you know, you can go in and fix a part on it and it'd be cool. No, this time I I knew that it was, it was toast. That's all. And... What happened? Can you tell me what happened? My transmission is probably burnt up. Which means the truck is screwed, right? I don't know. Like, I really don't even feel like recording this right now. I'm only recording it to hopefully, hopefully look back and say something. I don't know. But it won't even move our RV at this point. It won't move at all. Nope. I ain't gonna cry though. Crying don't don't ever help me get nowhere. He put the stick back in the oil thing. He grabbed a baby, Judah, which is right here, asleep. And he just sat on the back of the truck. I'm like, what you doing? Aren't you gonna fix this? And he was like, it's out of my hands. I can't fix this. You guys have no idea what I felt. Like he said, his stomach was sinking. My stomach sunk when he said that. Because I have had so much confidence in his ability to fix things. And yes, I know that his skill and his ability only comes from the most high. I totally understand that. So when he did not have the ability to fix this at this point, it was pretty detrimental also because we did not have the money to get in the truck and we don't have the money to rebuild or to fix the transmission this is huge i know that a lot of times people truck go out all the time people cars go out all the time for us this the truck and our rv is our home there is no other house for us to go to there is no brick and mortar for us all right let's get the rv towed to the house no this is our house And technically, the truck is our house because the truck moves our house. My husband and I were just sitting on the curb on Music City Drive. Just sitting. With no words to say to each other. I did do a quick phone call to my mother. And I just started crying because I said, Mom, I am just... Of course, I wasn't this girl. Mom, I'm just so done with this dirty i'm tired of this truck breaking down and it's always something it's always something it's always something every time we try to take a trip it's always something just forget it i said we'll just travel from a brick and mortar you know and she was like calm down go calm down and just go pray i was like mom i do what i'm supposed to do i follow the laws i i I do what he asked me to do i you know i'm a good person i do whatever you know and she was like good Things still happen to good people. You have to be tested. Bad things. What did I say? Good things. Things, bad things, still happen <laughs> to good people. You have to be tested sometimes. And she's like, "Baby, I'm sorry this is happening. Just, te- just go breathe, go pray, and call me back." Right? That ain't what you want to hear. You want somebody to just help you. Okay, so after she calls her mom and whatnot, uh, I had. Had to get myself together, and something just told me it was going to be okay. Just keep going forward. So I got up off my butt, 
and I picked my phone up and I called a couple of friends of mine, which is funny how they became my friends because literally the first time I met them was when they bought the pickup truck that we originally had yeah. to pull the RV with. And we've been tight ever since. I mean, it was, it was the whole, the whole story of how we came about was complete strangers. He showed up at the house from a Facebook post when we sold the truck and uh, they came, said he wanted the truck and we shook hands on it. He came back a few days later with money, bought the truck. And ever since then we've stayed in contact and we've actually became really good friends. So long story short, it's crazy how it happened because where we broke down at was about five minutes from both of their houses. I mean, it, it, it can't be over 10 minutes to, you know, because they, they don't live in the same place, but they live about five minutes apart. So where we broke down at was literally as close as possible to the best help that we could have asked for that'll do that that would have allowed us to get our home back to where we needed it to be. Yeah. So I called them and both of them immediately, you know, just all right, we're, we're on our way. Yeah. Like right now we all right, we're putting shoes on, we headed your direction. And mind you, it was like what, eight o'clock at night? Mm, yeah. Eight, nine o'clock. Yeah. Something like that. And uh they both rolled up like Power Rangers. And when I tell the you, day. it was kind of like they practiced <laughs> how they were going to pull in, like a synchronized swimming type deal. Like the they both just the headlights came in. Like that's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's some, some really good friends. But like I said, they showed up and uh, pulled my truck off from underneath the RV, dropped it, swapped pickup trucks, and the same guy that bought my truck gave me the keys back to the truck that I sold him yeah. and just told me to bring it back the next day. Like, that so, is, that's nothing but the most high. You right. know what I mean? Literally. Like, it's nothing but the most high with the fact that that's the place where the RV, the truck stopped at. Right. It could have stopped anywhere. Literally. And it stopped right there to where those guys, which of course really dear to us, um, were able to come to our rescue because the Most High gave them the ability. No other questions asked, no nothing. And that was the all from the Most High. And we want them to know that we appreciate them for always being there, strictly for meeting us off of a Facebook post from buying the truck. The same truck, mind you, we said that we didn't want for this journey, but that's the same truck that got us back to where we are today. Right. So we definitely appreciate that. So that's right there a full circle moment that only the most high could have done. Like the way he played our lives out, if you allow him, works perfect every time. But the key is you have to obey and you have to allow him. Now, with that being said, I know that Abiyah could have made that transmission work. You know, he can make, he does all things. He's all power. So he could have made the transmission work, but like my husband said, how would you know his power if he just made the transmission work? He normally does his works through people so that you can see his works, not through things, right? I mean, that's what you told me. And it obviously looks that way. It definitely looks that way. We're only in our early 30s, so we're still learning all about his amazing works, but it's been pretty awesome. The so next far. part of the story is once we finally got mind you we could not get the truck back so we had to leave the truck where it was which was in the hotel parking lot we had to call the hotel while we were on our way back to here to the campground to let them know that we know that our truck is still there we'll be back to get in the morning please don't tow it right Fair. so they were cool they took our number they were like we'll let you know if anything happens to it but fine we won't tow it so we got back here it was a heavy night just the thought of it right now is very emotional for me um, but it was a really, really heavy night. There was one of those times where I just had to look at the kids and say, be good to mommy. Mama needs y'all to be good to me right now. Because mama can't deal. Mama has a lot right now, you know. And my husband had to go to work the next day, early. Normally around 5 o'clock he has to get up and head, back, head to work. Um, so this night, we made it back. 
opened the RV back up and it was still home. Everything inside it still served us. It still took care of us the way the Abu Yad made it. It was still food in here. It was still warm. It still had heat. We still had lights. It was still our beds. It was still our home. It still had our love in it. So it did comfort us once we finally got it to where it needed to be. But there was still a heaviness because we knew that with this situation, our journey could be over for us. If you can't move your home, you don't have no journey. So we had no words. It came to the point where I didn't have answers. He didn't have answers. It was a really quiet night. It was um, some crying on my part. I felt very kind of numb and it's because this is our journey this is my livelihood this journey was started even started for the freedom to be more spiritually awakened to build relationships with each other with our children with the most high to be freer and if this journey was over on my part you could tell your part for me if this journey was over I didn't want to go back to a brick and mortar. I wanted to be free for a little while longer. I didn't, I want to be free to, to travel, to see our family, to see our friends, to meet new ones, to be a light to the world, to have less so that we can have more with each other. And if this journey was over because we had no means to pull this, if pulling this became more of a headache, we would have had to have ended it. We would have to go back to renting working regularly to pay for the rent, the lights, the water, the regular stuff. And for me, it was just way too heavy. I just, I just couldn't. Now, at this point, normally I pick up my phone and I film everything because I like to see our journey. I like to continue to document our journey so that hopefully others can learn, be inspired. That's both of our phones are going off. But I literally had no energy to care, to care to film, to document it. But I did it anyway, to document what I felt like, to cry to my phone, to tell my phone, to tell myself that to have that moment to film where we came from so that when we come out of this thing, we remember where it started. And pretty much what I was just telling the phone. And I can I can insert it. I might insert it here. So <clears throat> I'm I'm doing this video to just capture what my feelings are, my thoughts at this moment. So that I don't forget what I felt when this happened. Initially, when it first happened, um, I thought, what did I do wrong? I tried to follow the law, statutes, and commandments so that I could be taken care of and to simply just love Abu Yah because he is my, he's my king, the king of the universe. He is Abu Yah. Um... Cried. Um, just sitting here with baby Judah. <laughs> Before we go to bed, it is the same night. But he's all power. He's nothing less. And he can make, again, a broke transmission run smoothly. So why didn't he do... Why did he make bonds run? This is the only way we can move our home. And we have no one place that our home can be. So why did he make ours go out? But I quickly didn't even care about that answer. I just wanted to learn from whatever this is. I just prayed in my head for guidance to know what am I supposed to learn? What do we do now? Because you, 
are bigger than us. We know not. We, un we understand that. And the music you hear is my husband. He's in his shower and he's just trying to calm himself down too. Because he normally, and I hate seeing him like this, he fixes everything. And on one hand, I'm like, I always say that about my husband, you know. He can fix anything. Anything that has broken, he has fixed. Avi, I know, so I know that he only fixes things because he gives him that skill, that ability. But this one, he looked at it. He smelled the oil. He knew that sound because he knows cars that well. He knows trucks, he knows diesel engines, and he looked at that, he looked under the hood, checked the oil, and all he said was, this transmission is burned, and he sat on the curb. That has never happened. He's always fixed it. So... I immediately thought, Abia, what should we get from this? Is it that you want us to know that it's really you? Cause, because I already know that it's you. I know that it's Abia that fixes everything. I know that it's Abia that gives us the skill and the ability and the, the, the talents to do what we do. So, now I know a lot of times Abia does things so... We can know for hundred percent fact that it was no other person but him that got us through. So, after all those thoughts I had, I can only think: this is all I knew. This is all I know. He is our power. If you tell us to stop RVing and sell it, I'll do that. I just don't know what to do. On one hand, I feel like maybe we shouldn't have done this journey. We don't have the money to buy a new truck. And it's not even the money. I don't care about the money. I just want to be good in God's eyes. I just want to be taken care of. Blessedly, we've paid for this lot for the next two weeks. We're stationed for two weeks so we can figure something out with his guidance, of course. I know for, for sure that I know he steals all power and I know he could, he's going to fix this. And I know he's always, always working. He's already got it fixed. I just want to make sure that I keep the faith and I don't lose it when it's most important to use it in times like this. Um, I know another fact and it's not I know what, what ain't gonna work is going against God. That ain't gonna never work. So I'm gonna stick with him. And it couldn't just be the devil. Either way, I'm just gonna stick with him. I don't know what's gonna come of this. I'm just making this video so I can see where we came from, from what happened, to where this kind of turns, to where this is gonna end up. So for now, there is no moving the RV. But we still have a home. We're still healthy together. And we still praise him. What kind of light to the world will I be if I only documented the good things? But honestly, as a human, I am at a loss for words and thoughts. So we're gonna go to bed. I'm still gonna end it with all praise to the Most High. Yeah. Shalom.